How Ouija boards work? Hint, it's not ghosts. It's that time of year again the season when paranormal entities come out to play. But if you're thinking about grabbing a Ouija board for your next conversation with the other side, you might want to think again. Despite their long history as hoax spiritualist devices turned hit toys turned tools of the devil, Ouija boards won't actually put you in contact with demons or spirits. Any scary first-hand reports you might hear or read of real-life Ouija board horror stories are exaggerations, false claims, or a misunderstanding of how Ouija boards actually work. That might be disappointing news if you're hosting a Halloween sleepover, but it might also leave you asking, how do Ouija boards work? The answer is surprisingly simple. In the case of a Ouija board, your brain may unconsciously create images and memories when you ask the board questions. Your body responds to your brain without you consciously telling it to do so, causing the muscles in your hands and arms to move the pointer to the answers that you again, unconsciously may want to receive. There are multiple scientific studies that have shown various instances of the ideomotor effect in action. In one well-known and oft-repeated variant of the Ouija board test, blindfolded participants spell much more incoherent messages. You can try this one at home. The ideomotor effect is behind much more than just Ouija boards including several harmful real-life scams and therapies. The appeal of the ideomotor effect is that you actually may be communicating with something you can't typically access your own subconscious and that the experience can feel like communicating with something paranormal or unknown. This real physical effect causes some people to believe that seemingly miraculous or paranormal phenomena are behind certain behaviors and occurrences. It's a common element of demon possession hoaxes, since witnesses come to believe the possessed person is moving without her own control. It can also convince people they have the gift of automatic writing, meaning they insist that spirits can communicate with the living through their uncontrolled handwriting. Often, the ideomotor effect is used to defraud people who visit exorcists, psychics, mediums, and other self-proclaimed spirit channeling types sometimes leading to severe financial, physical, and psychological harm. Dowsing is another example of the ideomotor effect being exploited for financial gain. The practice, whose stated purpose is to divine water or other things located underground or concealed within something else, involves holding a special device, like a dowsing rod or a divining rod, and letting the ideomotor effect cause your hand to mysteriously point to the location of the desired object or substance. These devices have been scientifically tested and debunked again and again, but that hasn't stopped their purveyors from falsely claiming they can detect everything from gold to liver disease and hepatitis to harmful earth radiations. In 2013, one charlatan was convicted of selling nearly $70 million in fake bomb detectors to Iraqi police. Finally, the ideomotor effect lies behind a controversial, repeatedly debunked form of pseudoscience therapy called facilitated communication, which emerged as a popular therapy technique in the 1990s. Facilitated communication claims to work by allowing disabled or autistic patients to communicate through slight finger movements. In reality, science has proven many times over that the patient's movements are caused by the ideomotor effect, and that their caregivers are reading meaning into nothing. One scientist even referred to facilitated communication as Ouija board stuff. The disastrous effects of this fake therapy include a sex abuse case in which the caregiver claimed she used facilitated communication to obtain consent from her patient, and a devastating parental custody case where manipulative caregivers used it to suggest that the children involved had accused their parents of abuse. Sadly, it still exists today as a fraudulent speech therapy technique used with autism patients, disguised under various names like rapid prompting method, supported typing, or progressive kinesthetic feedback. Ironically, the same factor lies at the heart of both the cause and the effects of the ideomotor phenomenon, we want to believe. Our desire to confirm the existence of ghosts, spirits, and other improbable possibilities is what convinces Ouija board users, facilitated communication proponents, and anyone else who encounters the ideomotor effect in action that they've experienced something real, a real visitation from another dimension, some sort of mystical sign, or an indication that a patient trapped in his own mind is suddenly able to break free and communicate.
But the marvelous thing about a Ouija board isn't what a planchette might read or a psychic might claim the spirits are saying through it from the other side. In reality, the true wonder of the Ouija board is what lies within our own subconscious.